I would like for you to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4, and uh, it's really 3 through uh, 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 through 5. When you have it, say amen. 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 Let's read. Father, we thank you and we give you praise and glory and honor. We worship you and adore you. This is the day that you have made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity for us to be able to gather together. You said we're two or three are gathered together that you're right here in our midst. So we welcome your presence, Lord God, and we thank you for every song, for every encouraging word that has gone before us, Lord God, and we ask you to continue to minister to your people. Now, Lord, I ask you to speak through my vocal cords and think through my mind. Minister to your people as only you can. I yield and submit myself to you. And in the name of Jesus, I cancel every contract and terminate every assignment and bind and rebuke retaliatory spirits and backlashing spirits and everything that would try to stop, block, or hinder the word from going forth. And Lord, we give you the praise. Loose your ministering angels, your guarding angels, your warring angels, Lord. We welcome your presence in this place. In Jesus' mighty and matchless name and the church said amen. amen and amen you may be seated I'm going to read 2nd Corinthians chapter 10 verses 3 through 5 out of the New Living Translation we are human but we don't wage war as humans do we use God's mighty weapons not worldly weapons to knock down the strongholds of human reasoning and to destroy false arguments we destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. Amen? Amen. As we are fully aware of what is taking place in the world today because of the death of George Floyd, a man that the word that the world has was able to watch, a modern contemporary lynching by the knee of a white man. Yes. I've been praying how I would address this in a manner that would educate and inspire you to do things that, we, that will make a difference in the spirit realm as well as the natural realm. We need to be in, effective in both since we have access to both realms. That's right. The spirit world and the natural world we live in and see in our daily lives. I have heard different people say a lot of things. Some were great, others made me a little concerned. Well, Both had truth we must acknowledge to accomplish change going forward. People mentioned buying firearms. Others encouraged the gangs to protect their own and to come together and stop fighting against each other, but to come as one and protect your own. Make sure you vote. Some say, let us have a peaceful protest. Others said, we're getting, we're getting not, we're, we're gonna get nothing accomplished except through this, uh, except the same results of the brutal murder, murders by some of the police officers if we continue to protest, protest quietly. Yes, I said some. Not all police officers are dangerous, but there are enough on payroll that are murdering the black race like we are insects that must be killed. My God. Amen. We have people that has come into the churches, killed church family, and basically got away with it. My God. I remember seeing something a few months back later in last year where a, a, a young man came into the church and he pulled out a weapon and he was getting ready and he, sh he shot a couple of people. And, uh, but before he can do, he killed two people. Wow. But he didn't know he had walked in a church that was trained and actually had a ministry department for concealed carry members. And when he pulled out his, members from different angles just stood up and they stopped him. So I, I, I don't know about you, but uh, you know, all that takes place these right. days. Uh, those, those church members that were sitting at church having a Bible study and that young man walked in 
and shot them. Maybe if somebody had one, All right. mm -hmm. Amen. that would have been the end of that story. Amen. Because he's still alive and he's not in jail. I remember a church member asked a pastor when we were first saved, a, a, a church member asked the pastor, is it wrong to protect your family if someone break into your home? He replied, yes, we should pray and let God fight our battle. Amen. And they asked him again. They said, you mean to tell me if someone came into your house and was attacking you or your family or your wife or your children, you wouldn't do anything? And he said, no. So you have people on across the board. Some will say, no, I wouldn't. And no, I would, you know. And others will say, oh, I have something for them. Let them come in my house. Right, right. I know a person who would like to get their concealed carry license, but refuse because they have black sons who are old enough to drive and don't want their children to become a victim of a senseless shooting because it shows up in the vehicle registration that this vehicle is a licensed to carry My God. firearm person. Wow. And they may approach that car and just because they're sitting there yes. and because of the fear that they might have something, yes. they might shoot. Just like they did the they young man, I don't remember where it was, he was in the car with his girlfriend and the yeah. baby four year old yes. in the back. Yes. And he was saying, sir, I am a concealed carry. And the man was so afraid that he pulled out his gun and shot him anyway. Jesus. Jesus. So I'm not, I'm not one to say, don't carry weapons. All right. So pray for me if you feel that way. Right. <laughs> there was a man that entered a church a few months ago and, and, and he took lies, but those trained members, made a difference Amen. so you know if you know if you feel like saints shouldn't car carry a gun okay i respect what you think but then there are those who say i'm gonna carry one and if someone will walk up in the church and the pastor have is, is a can carry concealed person and they see them coming they would be surprised when they walk in the church and the pastor pull out one All right. <laughs> before they come through the doors I know that's right. when they come out and they're pulling it out somebody else already waiting for them so no not here devil Amen. so these are different things that we are at this time in our life yeah. this is where we are we're living in the last days we as a black race must teach our children especially the young men when they are old enough to drive, we have to teach them how to conduct themselves if they are ever uh, stopped by the police. Yes. I remember when we had to teach our son. And I remember when he was stopped and he was 16 and his grandfather had purchased a vehicle for him and he had his sister in the car and they had just left school and they were coming home and the police officers stopped him. And when they stopped him, they asked him questions. How, what are you doing? Whose car is this? Why aren't you at work? He said he just came for practice or getting ready to go to practice. And they said, well, what are you doing having a car and not working? Who do you think you are? But we had to make sure that we taught him not to say anything because it may cost him his life. Jesus. So they literally prejudged him and told him he should be working. He said, well, I, I don't work because I, I play basketball and my parents allow me to play basketball and they take care of me. Who, who are you? Now, I can remember these different things. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. I remember how one of my kids were at school and uh, they wanted to teach something and I made sure that I was there and they were surprised that I showed up. So the next time they did part two, they didn't tell the children. So they couldn't tell me. So I wouldn't show up. So we have to teach our children how to conduct themselves being black human beings. All right. In the school system, we must support our children and be proactive in their education or they can get lost in the system. Amen. Amen. They can be told what they are not capable of or not able to accomplish and be directed to another career 
that they deem is better fit for them. Amen. I read it in the textbook when I was getting my, my degree for um, business. And I read it. They didn't tell us to read it, but I read it anyway because I had the book. Amen. And the book taught that they would train kids from a young age and tell the young white boys and teach them to reach for the doctor. But they'll teach a young white girl to be the nurse. All right. yep. Yep. And they would teach the young black girl to be the aide yep. or the domestic. And they would teach the young black man to be a mechanic. Now there's nothing wrong with getting a, 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 a profession, to have a profession, right. but they literally were training the kids on which way to go. Right. Amen. And if that's not that child's desire, who are you to say Hallelujah. that we are not smart enough, intelligent enough to choose the career that we want? Right. I remember being in middle school and I was in the gifted class and my teacher told me, Yolanda, young white girl, because you are very smart and it doesn't take much for you to learn and you it takes little effort for you to receive an A, I'm gonna always give you a grade lower than what you deserve. But I didn't have one to back me up or to support me. So we have to make sure that we be proactive with our children in the education system. Show up to their games. Yes. Show up when it's parent-teacher conference. Amen. Show up well, every time that the doors open and you're supposed to be there, make sure you're there. Amen. And if you're not capable of doing it, you're not able, make sure that you send someone in your behalf. Amen. Because these are the things that we have to do. I remember a white colleague asking me how it feels to live in a land that is not my own. A, a white professor, you know, I'm in, I'm in a master's program. Right. And he asked me because I'm the only black woman there in this class. And he said, how does it feel to be in a land that you don't own? I asked him, how does it feel? You can tell me just as much as I can tell you because you weren't here originally neither. Amen. Amen. This land below it belonged to the native. Yes. So how does it feel? Right. And by the way, let me ask you a question. This air conditioning that you're enjoying, right. we invented. Right. How does it feel? Amen. The comb that you brush, the comb that the brush that you do your hair with every morning, how does it feel? We invented it. Amen. When you put that letter in the mailbox, right. how do you feel? Because we invented it. Right. And when you look at the, you stop at the traffic light, how do you feel? We invented that. So if we have any questions, you tell me how it feels. Yes. And he left me alone for the rest of the school year. But these are the things that we have to do. I remember a professor in the master's program. And I was with a white colleague. And we were doing the, we had to do partners to do the class. He gave me a D and gave her a B. Oh now, how could we get the same, the, these different grades? So I had to repeat that class. Oh and this time I said, okay, I'm gonna do it by myself. Cause if he's gonna give me that, he might as well give it to me. You know, which, which way are you gonna do it? Let's see what you're gonna do now. I went and I met with him and I asked him, what do I need to do to make sure that I pass this class? What do I need to do? So you're tutoring, I will come to your tutoring. I came to his tutoring. I did everything he said, and he did very little for me. He didn't speak, he didn't really give me any help, and he gave me another D. Oh, Jesus. So I had to take that class online. I received an A. My God. So I sent it to the whole the staff and let them all see it wasn't me, it was him. My God. Amen. So what I'm saying is, as a black people, we cannot ignore 
It is very real. And with that in mind, we have to know that we are of value. Yes. Amen. We experience microaggression, microaggression, and microaggression on a regular basis. And if you don't know what microaggression is, it's where someone at uh, do the little subtle things. Mm -hmm. You're at the cash register and they ask you to give them uh, ID, but the person in front of you or behind you, they didn't ask them to give any ID. That's microaggression. Or they might say something and you think, it, well, is that, did, did they just insult me? Or did they say any, did that? And you, you're wondering, and if you say something, you'll say, what are you talking about? I didn't say anything. Why are you so self-conscious? Why, are, you're that, that. That's called microaggression. Then we have macroaggression. And no one needs to know the definition of that. We don't have to ask what that is. It's just straight in your face. Just like George Floyd. That's macroaggression. It's directly in our face. There's no question about it. We were able to watch a current lynching by the knee. Something took place in the spirit realm, though, that has changed the course of America and the black race. This time is not just the black race, but all races are speaking on the injustice that is taking place in the black and brown communities. Amen. Not to mention the pandemic and how it has affected the black and brown communities more than anyone else. What is what it what it what it is being what's being said is all true. Remember when I said they said, well, we need to fight. See, because we're now we're trying to say, how can we continue this? Right. What can we do? So it's all you know, what is being said is all true. We do need to stand up. It's time to stand up. We can't just be peaceful and be quiet and not say anything because if we do, that's exactly what they want us to do and they'll continue to do the same thing until the next one. So we can't just be totally quiet. Right. It's time to make a difference is what they're saying. And I agree, it is time to make a difference. It's time to speak out and I agree, it's time to speak out. It's time to declare not another inch Amen. or not another life Amen. and pretend that it's okay. okay. It's time to use also spiritual weapons as well. Amen. Now, all the different things that are being said, I didn't hear anybody say, let's tap it in the spirit realm. Right. I didn't hear anyone say, the, that we, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty to God through the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. I haven't heard anyone say that, because we are people who have access to both realms. We have access to the spiritual realm, as well as the natural realm, and as well as we speak in the spiritual realm, it will manifest into the natural realm. Thank so what Lord. we have to do is learn to operate in both. Amen. 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 The scripture says that we are supposed to put on the whole armor of God. Yes. Be strong in the Lord and in the might in his mighty power. Put on all God's armor so that you will be able to stand firm against all strategies of the devil. For we're not fighting against flesh and blood enemies but against evil rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers in this dark world, and against spirits, evil spirits in the heavenly places. Those people who are murdering the black people are not being led just by themselves. There is a spirit that's influencing them, that's coming against the black race, and we have to learn how to tap into the spirit realm, because if you deal with the root, you can get rid of the fruit. All right, thank you, Lord Jesus. So what we have to do is, yes, we have to do some things. And yes, we have to do uh, uh, do some certain things that they're saying. But we have to also attack it in the spirit realm. Amen. Thank you, boss. 
This is the time that we are supposed to spend in prayer. Right. Now we come with all these different ideas. Who has shut the doors? Who have closed the, the turn off the TV to seek and hear what God is saying during Thank this time? Right. Who has taken time to pray in the spirit and be quiet before his presence to hear what he is saying? Right. I've been listening and I've been, I've been going through things and I've been asking the Lord. I'm like, what am I supposed to stay, say standing before your people? Because I am a little black girl that rolled with my father and went over to the Black Panthers and, and saw where Angela Davis and all of them are. They were. So I'm, I am from that era. So how do I balance it being a Christian woman now? Right. And I can't just go shoot somebody. Right. Right. And, and, and I like what the young man said one thing. He said, part of me want to go and have peace like Martin. And the other part of me want to fight like um, Malcolm. Malcolm. Amen. So, you know, you, we are human. Yes. But the key is because we have an advantage, because we are human beings, yes. But the spirit of God is abiding on the inside of us. We can take authority over different things. So what we do is access both worlds. What we can do is change some things in the natural and work through it in the spirit as well. Amen. So there are saying there are different things that we can do and I would say let's do it. All right. Blackout, blackout day is July the 7th. All right. And that said, don't spend no money on July the 7th. All right. No black or brown racers buy anything for one day. Just to let them know that we exist and we are helping them. All right. And if we do that, I'm not telling, I don't want you to hear it, think that I'm, I'm speaking hate. All right. Because I'm not. I have biracial, biracial grandchildren and I love them. All right. And they have gone through things already because of being biracial. I have the youngest one asking questions about his race and his mama's race and his daddy's race because of what's going on. But no devil in hell is gonna destroy my grandchildren right. as long as I'm living because I'm gonna teach them the best of both worlds. Amen. So what we have to do is do some things, yes. If you see something going on, then yes. I remember times I'm driving in Pickerington, Ohio, and I see a young black man where two officers slammed him, got him out of his car, slammed him up against the car, and threw his hands behind his back, just shoved him and pushed him. And me, of course, don't know how to just be moving on out the way because a part of me is just a part of me. Right. And I pulled up next to them and said, excuse me, officer, do, uh, do I need to get in touch with his mother? And he said, ma'am, I need you to keep moving. I said, young man, what's your mama's number? Give me her number and I will make sure that you're okay. And they said, ma'am, you better leave. He says, ma'am, just go ahead on, it's okay. I said, do you want me to call your mother? I'll call her. See, because that's just a part of me. My God, amen. amen. So what we can do is attack some things in the spirit. There has been something that has been released in the spirit realm where Shem, Ham, and Jephthah is now coming together. I, I, I heard a young man say that um, in the Asian community, see, this is why you have to do the blackout. In the Asian community, their money stay in it for 30 days. In the European community, it stays in their in their community for 17 days. In the black community, it stays for two day, two hours. My God. Jesus. Help us, Lord. We have to learn to do things differently. Amen. So on, on July the 7th, don't spend anything. Let them feel it. And if we have to, they're, they're talking about even boycotting restaurants. Now I'm just telling you, you make your own choice. But while we're praying, and we're supposed to pray. You, you see what has literally came through the spirit realm? This is not just something natural. All right. This has come through the spirit realm. Thank you, and because it has come, we have a breakthrough through the spirit realm. And because the Lord is returning soon, this has to come together where Sham, Ham, and Jephthah must come together. Thank you, Father. And work together to make it happen. So because of that, we are all gonna have to stand. And we, that's why you don't see just white uh, black men walking. 
But you see, Shem, Ham, and Jephthah all walking together, all races coming together. Because we are living in the last days. And before the Lord comes back, there are some things that must take place. And if you don't understand eschatology or the end times, I challenge you to study. Right. And you wouldn't be surprised what's taking place. So the other thing that we can do while we're praying and we're supporting, we support our black businesses. And that's something that we have to do. And don't generalize it like um, a minister Tucker used to tell us, she said, don't generalize it and stop going to one place because they did you wrong and say, see, that's how they are. That's why I don't be bothered. No, don't generalize and say everybody's the same because that's what they, how they do us in the first place. Amen. You just not go to that one again. Amen. That's how you do it. Educate your children and your grandchildren. Amen. Teach them who they are as black race or biracial children and teach them what they have as children of God. And then I want you to remember, I love teaching. I'm getting ready to close, but I'm gonna close with this story. We went to Canada as a, as a trip for the church. And we went to the church, we went to Canada to Uncle Tom's cabin. And we had a, a good, we had a full bus. And as I walked around and I'm listening to different ones and I heard people saying that they were disappointed in the trip because they thought they were coming to Canada for something better than this. Now, when you are labeled as Uncle Tom, it's an insult because of your ignorance. But if you understand who Uncle Tom was and what he did, you would understand it's a compliment. Amen. So I set this thing up to educate my folks, my black people, my black brothers and sisters, because I'm an educator to my heart. Amen. God has brought me from a family of educators. Thank you, Lord. I have professors who are educators from my mother's side. We are born to educate. My aunt is a social worker and I am a licensed counselor. Her husband is a electrician. And my husband is electrician. I love to teach. It's in me and it's a part of me. And I will not apologize for that. So when I'm trying to teach and the people reject it, you're not rejecting what I'm teaching you. You're rejecting what the word of God said. My people perish because of a lack of knowledge. Not because it wasn't made available to them. But because they rejected it, and because they rejected it, I reject them, and because I reject them, I reject their children. My God. Hallelujah. Jesus, the word. The key is educate yourself. Yeah. Don't wait for somebody to teach you. Hallelujah. Don't wait for somebody to teach your children about black history. Right. You do it yourself. Because if you don't, they're gonna get it twisted and it's gonna be gone. Because they're going to make the blacks white. My God. But what we have to do is learn to educate our children and our children's children. And what you have to do is choose to be a spiritual mother to somebody. Right. Choose to be a spiritual father to somebody. And pardon them and teach them so they can turn their lives around. Thank you, Father. God has already done a big thing. Mm -hmm. All we have to do is walk in it. Yes. What are you going to do from here? That's the question. What are you going to do from here? Yeah. Now, the strategy has already been set up. Come on now. But what are you going to do? I heard a young man say that when they boycotted for the bus, it took a whole year for them to get anything accomplished. But we have the fruit of the spirit. And one of them is patience. So we don't have to just tolerate anything. But what we have to do is learn to walk in our authority and command some other things to be loosed in the spirit realm and get some of these people that are being used by the enemy out of these different offices and come against that too in Jesus' name. So yes, vote. Yes, show up at different meetings. Yes, protest. But yes, pray in the spirit. Yes, bind the strong man. Yes. yes, cancel the contracts. Terminate the assignments. Come against generational curses. Yes. And cancel it out and use the word of God. And know that the word of God is real and it will not return unto 
him void, but it will go forth and accomplish the very thing that it was sent out to do. But all you have to do is learn how to walk in it and use it and apply it in your everyday living. Use your weapons, saints. And we'll continue to see the change take place. So one of the weapons we use is prayer. So look at somebody say prayer is a weapon. Prayer is a weapon. Don't